Hey everybody, welcome back. So today I'm going to do another installment in printing with nylon on the Ender 3. In our last video, I hope you watched it, my last video, I showed the Ender 3 printer I'm using, the modifications I've done to it to print nylon, and some and for full disclosure, some modifications I've done to it that probably don't need to be done to print nylon, but just because I've done because I think it makes it print better. And I printed these. These are half-inch national pipe thread pipe nipples. Actually, they convert a, if you got a female thread part and you want to put it onto another three male, female thread part, you need something like this to go in between. And one of these two I crushed with my large channel lock pliers, and it was this one. And it's really, really hard to see where I crushed it. It didn't completely recover. You can see there is a slight peak. I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but there's a slight peak right here. It doesn't prevent it from being used. And I think in the further part of my test, I am going to use this one. So, what's our next step? I also showed you this. Now, the question is, what does this go to? Let me pop you over to my screen capture. It goes to this. This is a... 125 PSI, 2.5 horsepower, 21 gallon Harbor Freight compressor. I used to have an old compressor I've had for, God, probably 40 years. I bought when I was a kid doing hot rod work. And when you turned it on, it went chugga, 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 chugga. Didn't bother anybody. This thing makes this horrendous noise. Sounds like what I imagine a B29 with bluey pipes would sound like. But, um... It is loud and it is obnoxious. And I have been told that most of the noise is coming from the intake right here. This little part here is the same as this part here. I got the lid off it so I can show it to you. So the trick is to add a muffler in the middle of it. And I'm going to switch all the way over to screen cap. And I have actually found a muffler on Thingiverse. So let me pop over and show you what I found. A guy designed a compressor muffler. And this is what this part looks like. And it's in three pieces. And you have to assemble it. And he's got index marks on it. And let's see what it looks like in Cura. And, there's the, and it goes in line. This original muffler stays there. It's not even a muffler. Let me pop back to that real quick. This thing isn't even a muffler. All it has in it is a little chunk of foam that acts as a filter, which does seem to work since it's got a piece of crap on it there. Anyway, that's all that is. That's not a muffler at all. So I'm going to pop you over. I've downloaded that from Thingiverse. This guy's name is W.N. Norton, to give credit where credit due. The man designed this, and we're going to see how well it works. And I've got it open in Cura. Let me show it to you here. Here we go here. Yep. That's not it. Where'd it go? This is it. Okay. Why won't it stay up? What you doing to me here? Huh. Won't stay up. Let's minimize that. Maybe. Oh, there it is. Let me pop back over to it. There we go. So here it is in Cure. It's going to print on the Ender 3. These are the same nylon settings in my Ender 3, or excuse me, in the Cura Slicer that I showed in the previous video. I went through them all pretty much, changes I'd made, why I made them, and this is the orientation that you want to print these three parts in. It, um, and like I say, he's given registration marks. I don't know if you can see one here. They're very, very difficult to see on an all-white part. Probably would be on an all-black part, too. But um, you can see them. But I am going to go ahead and print this, and I am going to be right back. And you have to glue this together, too. And I know that nylon is kind of hard to glue. But let's get this printed, and I will be right back. Okay, so they're all done printing, and here they are, and let's take a quick look at them. Pretty nice. I did get some stringing in the center. Got a little, few little burn marks here. I'm not sure where that came from. And you can see some, a little bit of roughness left from the Z-axis hops. But um, for the most part, it looks like a really solid part. 
I am not going to crush this one, but um, I can squeeze it as hard as I can. It's as solid as a rock. And it's threaded. Each end is threaded. And um, pipe nipple is going to go in there. And each end is going to go like that. And we're going to... Nope, that's not how it goes. <laughs> Stupid. The, um, the muffler goes on one end of it. So what you do is you find the registration marks, and I've marked them in black. Excuse my cut-up thumb. I can, um, I can replace shingles on my roof. I can repair the air conditioner. I can fix the car, and I don't hurt myself, but as soon as I try and make breakfast, I cut the tip of my thumb half off. Anyway, you align the register. There's a slight shelf in this. this. This plate part fits in on the shelf, and... Um, well, it did before. Not, there we go. It fits in on the shelf. And you line the registration marks up. And there it goes. It snaps, kind of snaps together. Oops, you couldn't see it. Let me show it again since it didn't appear to be in that video. Um, you, line, you line the registration. There, I'm out again. You line the registration marks up. And you, um, you get it all lined up. And it kind of snaps together. And you glue it in that position and then kind of hard to hold it all together the muffler screws in there this screws into the compressor itself and then this acts as a muffler and hopefully all that intake noise or not all of it of course but hopefully a goodly amount of it will be gone so I'm gonna glue this thing together I'm gonna get it on my compressor I'll probably have to use my phone for the last part of this video when we fire the compressor up and test it out but I will be right back again. Here is my compressor. I have got the muffler installed. I had to glue it together with Gorilla Brand Super Glue because that's all I happen to have. I know it's not the best thing to glue nylon. However, it did glue it together and I dropped it on the concrete a couple times to make sure it wasn't going to fly apart and it hasn't. So we're going to go with this. It is a little cooler here today at my location. It is, let me look at my time here it is about 20 after 3 and yesterday this time it was 212 degrees not 212 ha 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 it was a um 112 degrees fahrenheit you can do the calculation yourself for that for celsius if you need the temperature in my garage right now is look at the white wall it is 103 at the wall it is a little warmer at the compressor. I have run it for a few seconds just to see what the sound difference is, and it has silenced it significantly. I'm going to leave a pencil on the top so we can see how much it vibrates, although I have a feeling it's not going to stay there for long. But let's start it up and see what happens. It does vibrate quite a bit. Let the tank dry, so I'm going to let it charge all the way up. There is still a significant amount of mechanical noise. Sounds more like vibration than anything else, but it has taken quite a bit of the rumble out of it. Oh, what's the head temperature? My head temperature is 130, 140. Temperature of the part is 106, about the same temperature as the garage. So I'm going to speed it up here a bit. I had the tank empty, so I am going to pause it here until the tank fills up. And, um, Let's see if it stays together. Okay, we're back. It has just finished charging. There is the gauges all the way up at 125. The time is 331. So it took it about, I'd say it took it about, I don't know, 225. It took it about, I don't know, probably 8 to 10 minutes to completely charge up. 
let's get some temperature it stayed in one piece let's get some temperature readings temperature reading right where at the aluminum head right where the um, muffler screws in is a hundred and I'm getting 198 I go over further and it goes all the way up to 230 Fahrenheit the part itself is looking like it's um, 107 hundred and uh, I got 110 over here let's see if we can get close over to there yeah still 110 113 didn't heat up as much as I thought it was going to the air rushing through it probably kept it pretty cold but still threaded into that head right where it threads into that head it's I don't know PLA might survive that PETG would the vibration would kill the PLA however but there you have it it did make a significant sound reduction unfortunately the sound it took out was the lower level you know more bass type noise and not the high-pitched noise that makes you crazy it's still too loud for me to stand out here with it but it did make somewhat of a difference a good difference in its sound level so that's it for now I will keep you apprised we'll see how long this part lasts honestly if we can I can grab it and wiggle it and yeah it's pretty warm but um, right now it's surviving and we will hope it survives into the future and for those of you who um who don't want to modify your Ender 3s to print in nylon don't despair I have a series coming up on PETG I have a little project for PETG apart from my outside air conditioning unit broke so we're gonna put PETG to the test as well in fact I am actually printing the parts and recording some of the video while I did this doing it inside so I'll have that up in three four days hopefully and we'll put some PETG to the test I hope you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe and hit notifications if you did use my links below if you would that would be great and I will catch you guys the next time bye for now